Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about what certifications you need to be a labor and delivery nurse. I've been a labor and delivery nurse for about nine months now, and I have finished getting all of my necessary certifications through my hospital. My hospital has a new grad residency program for nurses, and it puts us through all of our necessary certifications. So I'm gonna go through one by one and tell you guys what certifications you would need to practice as a labor and delivery nurse. My only disclaimer is this is just what is true for my hospital. I know every hospital is different and might require or not require certain things, but I'm going based off of what I have seen from my hospital and on different job applications what they require. So the first thing that they're going to require you to have is a basic life support certification. This is like a CPR certification. You go to a class, you watch videos, you practice on a like doll dummy kind of thing doing chest compressions and you learn about different situations that could land you in that. And then at the very end you have to do a test so that they can make sure you know how to do CPR and how to activate the chain of command and all of that. I have mine through the American Heart Association. I've had it for years because I had to have it in nursing school. I have a little digital card that I, whenever I apply to a job, I attach that. And that certification is good for two years. I cannot practice without having that renewed. I would be pulled off the floor if one of my certifications expired and I was still trying to work. The next certification I need is the American Heart Association Advanced Cardiac Life Support. This is the next step up from BLS. This is where they teach you about heart rhythms and it just kind of expands on everything you learned in basic life support. You still have to take a test at the end. You have to show how to use certain airways and how to do CPR at the end, and this also needs to be renewed every two years. I didn't need to have this until I became a registered nurse. The next certification I need as a labor and delivery nurse is neonatal resuscitation, or NRP. My NRP class was one of my favorites I've ever taken. You go through a birth scenario where we had like a shoulder dystocia, where a baby got stuck. I had to act as the labor nurse on what I would do, how I would give report to the NICU, and then the NICU went through and practiced intubating and everything. We kind of acted in our own roles, so I didn't have to worry about intubating or anything like that, but I got to watch it all firsthand and learn all about it. We learned about all the different types of airways you can use. We learned about how to give chest compressions, how to give breaths with a Neopuff and a bag mask. We took a test at the end and had a mega code, which is just a scenario where you work through everything you just learned and you pretend like it's real life. And that needs to be renewed every two years as well. Something my hospital requires labor nurses to have is intermediate fetal monitoring held by A1. My hospital requires you redo it every two years, but it technically doesn't expire. So it just depends on your hospital's policy. You learn about how to read a fetal heart rate strip. You learn about the way babies are oxygenated in utero and how the placenta plays into that, what each D cell means, what variability means on a fetal heart rate strip and everything in between. I actually got a lot of value out of this class. I just took it very recently and I feel like it made a huge difference in my understanding of fetal heart rate monitoring. On certain labor and delivery job postings I've seen, sometimes they list advanced fetal monitoring is required. That's a step up. You take it through A1. I have never taken that class at least not yet. At the time of filming this, it just sort of depends on what your hospital will want. So there's intermediate and advanced. I have only taken intermediate so far. Some ways to get these certifications are to see if your hospital offers classes because then it might be free and that would be the way I would try to do it. You can always go to like the American Heart Association or AWAN's website and look up to see where there's going to be classes and that way you can pay. These do have to be in person for at least part of it because you have to do that mega code where you practice the skills you've learned. You don't want to ever let your certifications lapse because you cannot practice without them. Usually if you're a new grad going through new nurse residency, they will put you through all of these certifications as part of your orientation. I've also heard of like fire stations offering basic life support sometimes or like CPR certification. You just have to make sure that it's the one that your hospital is going to require. There are different forms of this and you want to double check before you take and pay for the wrong class because that would be a huge bummer. So yeah, that is every certification that I have had to take as a labor and delivery postpartum antenatal nurse. I think that they have helped so much. I always love of taking certification classes because I learn a ton while I'm in them. I love to learn and I feel like it changes the way I practice every time. So I highly recommend them even though they are required. Let me know in the comments below if your hospital requires something different for you guys to be certified or if they don't require some of the things I listed. I love hearing about how different hospitals orient and train their labor nurses. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Because this video was kind of short, I always want to add on and I'm going to add on what it's really like being a new nurse. I made a list earlier today of some of the things that were hard about being a new nurse on a new unit and I just want to share them with you because I didn't really expect some of these things and I think I would have liked to be a little bit better prepared. Usually you're on a totally new unit so you have to learn where everything is, you have to learn who everyone is and it can be hard when you're trying to rush around and find something quickly and you have to ask for help a million times a day. That was hard because I had worked on the same unit for two years and then to transfer up to labor and delivery I was like I don't even know where the bathrooms are. You have no friends. <laughs>
<laughs> that's kind of like a joke, but it's also not a joke. I came from a unit where there were so many staff working every shift. We had a huge emergency department. So to come up to labor and delivery and postpartum, it was way smaller like staff numbers each night. And you're kind of secluded if you're on postpartum versus labor versus antenatal. Sometimes on antenatal, there's only three nurses working for the whole unit. And it's just really quiet, especially on nights, kind of hard to make friends. I feel like it got a little bit better on labor when we would all sit at like the nurse's station, but I don't know. I just feel like it was really, really hard having no friends going from being friends with like everybody on my old unit. I think it also depends on the unit you're working on and days versus nights and just kind of the culture of your unit. Because I feel like in the emergency department, by the time I had worked there for six months, I had so many friends. Like I was friends with everybody, it felt like. And then now I've worked on labor, delivery, recovery, postpartum, all that for about nine months. And I feel like maybe I have like a couple of good friends. I'm, I feel like I'm like, everyone's very friendly, but just that like hang out outside of work, really close friend, I have not really made a bunch of, and that's been really hard and was really unexpected, but it's just a different culture on every unit. As a new nurse, I'm working three night shift 12s a week. And that was a big adjustment from working 20 hours a week as a tech. And I did eight and four hour shifts as a tech. And now I do 12s. So that was really, really hard. And after nine months, I still feel like I'm not adjusting to that. I think having a toddler makes a huge difference. But another problem slash just thing about being a new nurse is that constant like anxiety or feeling that something's wrong with your patient. I was hoping it would get better by now, but it kind of hasn't. And it's usually like your gut telling you that like something's wrong or something could go wrong. And a lot of times I'm asking myself, are you just nervous because this is a stressful or new situation or is something actually wrong? And sometimes you just know like the baby's heart rate strip has just looked okay. And like some of the things mom's complaining of. You just have a bad feeling in your stomach, but technically there's nothing wrong yet and there's nothing you can really do besides just let people know you're concerned. And I feel like that's hard because there have been times I've been right and there was something wrong and we did end up in a C-section and there's been times that everything was totally fine and I think I was just nervous for imminent delivery or just nervous being on my own. So that's hard as a new nurse, kind of knowing what's normal and what's not normal. Something that I didn't really take too personally, but I know other nurses have is not having people take you seriously. I'm personally okay with that only because I know I don't know everything and I know that I'm super new. If the staff doctor wants to reintroduce herself to me every time we work together for the first four months, ask if I've called the charge nurse every time there's a problem, I honestly am fine with that because I am really new. But I know some new nurses really feel like they're not trusted or they just aren't taken seriously because they're new and that's something you might run into as a new nurse. Another thing that happened to me definitely more on day shift than night shift was being given really, really heavy patient loads because they want to see what you can do and they want you to learn and all of that stuff. This is kind of a double-edged sword because you are new and you're learning where everything is and you're learning to fly on your own, but you're also being given like assignments that would be hard even for a seasoned nurse. You know, it's just tough. It can be really hard and you know that they're there to save you if you fall, but you know you're also being watched and to see how you can handle it. You know, it's different on every shift, like days versus nights. Whereas like on one shift, you're kind of being given like really easy assignments and like being helped a lot, but almost being treated like you don't know anything, which I mean, that's fine. <laughs> or you're being treated like you know everything and you're given like really, really heavy patient loads to see what you can do. And then that's good because maybe they have confidence in you, but it's like you're drowning. <laughs> that's something I didn't expect as a new nurse. And then the last thing that's kind of like a joke, but also serious, you don't know the lowdown on everything. You don't know everyone's preferences. You don't know the age old unit drama and that can be really hard. There are times you think someone's like mad at you. You see a situation playing out and you're like, why are they being like that? Or what? I don't understand. Like this is not what I would have expected to happen. And then someone finally fills you in that like 10 years ago, this happened and this doctor and this nurse always kind of butt heads about this. And it just takes time to learn all of those kind of nuances of a new unit. And you learn like who to call for certain situations. Everyone knows different things. Everyone has strengths. You have to learn who is like really good at everything. And it can be kind of tough when you're brand new. You know, within a year, you really pick up on a lot on a new unit and you kind of learn to spread your wings. I finally am starting to feel a little bit more confident, but also just as anxious as my first day. So I'm excited for that to kind of go away. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if you had something, you know, that surprised you as a new nurse that you really weren't expecting or that you don't feel like you were well prepared for in nursing school. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the love I've been getting. Having this channel is one of my favorite parts of my week. I absolutely love it and wouldn't change it for the world. So keep letting me know what you guys want to hear and I will keep making those videos for you. I love this symbiotic relationship. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.